Go ahead. Welcome back, everyone, to the 10 Minute Offense. Javon, Steven, and Jules here. We're uh, going to be doing a little baseball talk, sticking with the hometown Dodgers. Spring training got started uh, just a couple of days ago, and the Dodgers are 2 and 0, so great start for them. Um, but I think one of the more interesting topics here is taking a look at Trevor Bauer and his first start. So let's go around the, uh, the zoom room here and talk about how Trevor performed. Um, what would you guys think of, uh, of his performance yesterday? Uh, I, I, I caught the game live just before I was going to work. Uh, he looked solid, yeah. you know, two strikes and, uh, two strikeouts and two innings. So, you know, spring training, these, these, these studs, him, Bueller, Kershaw, they're not going to pitch a ton of innings. Um, so I think it's good. I did want to pull something up that I read, which I know you don't love him, but maybe this will, <laughs> maybe this will, where is it? Javon, that is. says, you know. uh, Trevor yeah, Bauer, yeah. <laughs> David Vassay interviewed him the other day and he said, Bauer said. Love David. He, he's one of my favorite guys to listen yeah, to. Yeah, he, he's great. He's a good follow on Twitter. He said Bauer told him that he spends an hour a day studying and logging his own metrics and that he has a staff that he employs four to five analysts that also analyze all his data. So for all the hype and hoopla that he uh, does for himself on social media, I do appreciate that, that he does put in work. You know, uh, it, it's similar to LeBron putting all this money into his body, right? So part of baseball, especially pitching, is analytics and all these metrics. And so the fact that, that he's willing to spend his own money and have his own staff and do this research to help him get better, uh, you know, I think sometimes the stuff that these guys do is, is part of building their brand. Um, but when you hear things like that, it's like, okay, like maybe I can deal with some of the anno annoying tweets <laughs> because you're, you're obviously committed uh, now in probably the past, you know, few years. So I just, I thought that was, that was something cool to hear, but from what yeah, I man, saw, he, 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 he looked good. You know, you can't take too much out of spring training, but it's a lot better than him getting rocked. Plus the Dodgers <laughs> scored 10 runs, which is, which is fun. Yeah. That was a cool quote to hear because it just shows that he's willing to get better and he knows there's always to, ways to improve year by year yeah. coming from a Cy Young winner. But like you guys said, Bauer looked good yesterday. Breaking ball was dominant. He calmed down. He even admitted it felt weird pitching in front of fans after like 16 to 18 months. But after he got that little jitters out the way, got that juice flowing, he was smooth. Like you guys said, two innings shutout game from him in the bullpen was what what else could you ask for? So I, I like that outing from Bauer. Yeah, yeah totally. Um, the breaking ball, you're right, Julian, looked real nice. So I think as all these other guys are geared up to hit fastballs, having a pitcher like that that can just go off speed. I mean, we have a couple guys that can, um, but that's just, you know, a dangerous weapon to have. So yeah, the first inning was a little rough. He gave up that hit, but um, settled down nicely and just went one, two, three in, in the second. So, yeah, he looked great. I, that's interesting stuff you, you said, Steve, about how he's real committed to fine-tuning his game. That's, that's cool, man. I think with a team like the Dodgers, I mean, they go super deep into all those analytics and stats. So that just fits right in with our culture. So. I'm starting to come around him day by day. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 I, and I, I think with things like that, that that can that bleeds into the other players. You know, maybe maybe not a Kershaw like a guy who's a vet and been just killing it for forever. But if if that can bleed into the young guys, you know, like a Dustin May or a Gonsolin, I'm not saying they got enough money to hire five guys to to do that stuff. But even if it means that they start doing it on their own, right? I I think that's a that's a big deal um to, to really help these young guys without even coming out and trying to do it they're like oh this is how this guy became the Cy Young winner now I, I'm gonna try it too you know I'm gonna start taking it to the next level so yeah 
So I think one of the other topics we should touch on here is the closer situation. Obviously last year, Kenley had a pretty rough season. I mean, his stats weren't horrible, but it wasn't like a shutdown Kenley Jansen type of year. So my question to you, Julian, is should Kenley Jansen be the bona fide uh, closer for the LA Dodgers? I would give him that closer title uh, for this season and see how it goes throughout. But I feel like Kenley, he, he would regroup, find his rhythm on the mound, get composed. And it's just probably just his technique on how he's delivering the ball. And I feel like he will fix that with the pitching coach. So I'll, I will let Kenley be the closer for us. Okay. Steve, you agree or no? Uh, I, th- I thought I was going to disagree. Uh, but then when you posed the question yesterday, I thought about it. What did he have yesterday? Not nine pitches, nine strikes. He two, almost had the immaculate two, inning. Two, yeah. Two K's. Uh, yes, sir. So yeah, if you're getting that Kenley, great. What it is, is <laughs> it's the Kenley that the Dodgers are down by two, you know, in the ninth and no outs. And he gets the first three guys on somehow. And you're like, what the F like this, this can't be. And the thing with baseball is with these closers, you know, not that that's happening every time, but when it's happening once every two weeks, which is what it seems like, it's a lot. Um, I guess the question really is what's the alternative? Like who, who could it be? Yeah. It's not him. And everybody loves, you know, Gratterall. I do too, but he doesn't have a ton of pitches in his arsenal. Like he throws gas. Right. So I guess what, what I'm worried about with him is if, if he's coming up expected to close all the time, guys are knowing he's just going to throw heat, heat, heat. Right. Uh, so it, it, the, the question really is if it's not Kenley, who would it be? Uh, some of my friends in, in our group text are saying like Urias great, but they have him maybe slated to be a starter. Uh, and, and you saw, he's more of kind of like a, like a two, three inning reliever, not so much a closer. And in the playoffs or like in the world series, things are just done differently. So that's, that's my question would be if it's not Kenley, who is it? So. Yeah. I think I, I would have to say right now he is the closer because it just takes a different kind of mentality to come in and, and get those last three outs. Like, yeah, Gratterall probably, has the biggest arm in all the majors, but um, you know, if guys are looking fastball and it's over the middle of the plate, they can still hit one Oh two. So I I would say right now, the only other guy I would think about maybe is Blake Trinan just because of what he showed last year in the playoffs. And he seems to have like that low heartbeat, you know, stone face. Like he's just, he's a killer kind of guy. So um, until Kenley kind of starts blowing games for us, like he did last year, and remember, last year was a shortened season, and he still kind of didn't really get the velocity up. So that's what I'm worried about is, like, if that cutter doesn't really cut like it's supposed to. So it's definitely something to follow, something to watch. I think, um, you know, Dave Roberts has to be on that. Yeah, maybe there's an unofficial, not a closer by committee, but, you know, let's say let's say Janley, uh, <laughs> Janley, Kenley Jansen <laughs> gets, you know, gets two, two opportunities a week just just to keep him rested you know i'm not i'm not sure if that works i know these guys you know he seems like a great guy <clears throat> at the end they have egos and want to go out there every time they can yep but to you know to your point last season was 60 games and he still struggled so what's he going to do over 162 games um so yeah maybe they throw some other guys out there like trying in or 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 Gratterall from time to time well, I will say this. If the Dodgers are up by 10 runs entering the uh, ninth inning every game, we won't need to have this conversation. So. <laughs> That's true. Can't wait to rest. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, that's, that's kind of all we have for you here on the, uh, the Dodger Talk. We'll get maybe some more baseball stuff going as the season gets started. And um, thanks for listening, guys. We'll get you some NBA going here, too. Yep.